The Testament of Levi Chapter 1 The copy of the words of Levi, and the things which he ordained to his sons, according to everything that they should do, and what things will happen to them until the day of judgment. Levi was in good health when he called them to him, for it was revealed to him that he was soon to die. And when they were gathered together, he said to them, I, Levi, was born in Haran, and I came with my father to Shechem. And I was young, about twenty years old, when Simeon and I brought vengeance on Hamor because of our sister Dinah. And when I was feeding the flocks in Abel Mall, Yahweh's spirit of understanding came upon me, and I saw all men corrupting their way, and that unrighteousness had built walls for itself, and lawlessness sat upon towers. And I was grieving for the race of the sons of men, and I prayed to Yahweh that I might be saved. Then a sleep fell upon me, and I observed a high mountain, and I stood upon it. And suddenly the heavens were opened, and an angel of God said to me, Levi, enter. And I entered from the first heaven, and I saw a great sea hanging there. And further, I saw a second heaven, far brighter and more brilliant, for there was a boundless light also in that place. Then I said to the angel, Why is this so? And the angel said to me, Do not marvel at this, for you will see another heaven more brilliant and incomparable. And when you have ascended toward that place, you will stand near to Yahweh, and will be his minister. You will declare his mysteries to men, and will also proclaim concerning him who will redeem Israel. And because of the one that will come through you and Judah, will Yahweh also appear among men, saving every race of men. Your life will be from Yahweh's portion, and he will be your field, vineyards, fruits, gold, and silver. For that reason, listen as it pertains to the heavens which have been shown to you. The reason that the lowest heaven appears gloomy to you is because it witnesses all the unrighteous deeds of men, and it contains fire, snow, and ice, which is prepared for the day of judgment, in the righteous judgment of God. Also, in it, are the spirits of the retributions for vengeance on men. And in the second heaven are the hosts of armies which are ordained for the day of judgment, to work vengeance on the spirits of deceit and of Belial. And above them are the holy ones. And the great glory dwells in the highest of them all, far above all holiness. In it are the archangels, who minister and make propitiation to Yahweh for all the sins of ignorance of the righteous. They offer to Yahweh a sweet-smelling savor, a reasonable and bloodless offering. And the angels who carry answers to the angels of the presence of Yahweh are in the heaven below this one. And in the heaven next to this are thrones and dominions, in which they never cease to offer praise to God. Consequently, when Yahweh looks upon us, we are all shaken. Yes, the heavens and the earth and the abysses are shaken at the presence of His Majesty. But having no perception of these things, the sons of men continue to sin and provoke the Most High. Chapter 2 Now for that reason, understand that Yahweh will surely execute judgment upon the sons of men. Because when the rocks are being split, and the sun is quenched, and the waters dry up, and the fire crouches down, and all of creation is troubled, and the invisible spirits melt away, and Sheol takes souls as spoils because of the visitations of the Most High. Then men will be unbelieving, and will continue to persist in their iniquity. On this account, they will be judged with punishment. For that reason, the Most High has heard your prayer, to separate you from iniquity, and that you should become to him a son, a servant, and a minister of his presence. You will light up the light of knowledge in Jacob, and you will be as the son to all the seed of Israel. And a blessing will be given to you, and to all of your seed until Yahweh will visit all the nations forever in his tender mercies. Consequently, counseling and understanding have been given to you, that you might instruct your sons concerning this. Because those that bless him will be blessed, and those that curse him will perish. Immediately after that the angel opened up the gates of heaven for me, and I saw the holy temple and the Most High sitting upon his throne of glory. And he said to me, Levi, I have given you the blessing of the priesthood until I come and sojourn in the midst of Israel. 
Then the angel brought me down to the earth and gave me a shield and a sword and said to me, Execute vengeance on Shechem because of your sister Dinah, and I will be with you because Yahweh has sent me. And at the time I destroyed the sons of Hamor, as it is written in the heavenly tablets. And I said to him, I implore you, Master, to tell me your name, that I may call upon you in a day of tribulation. And he said, I am the angel who intercedes for the nation of Israel, that they may not be utterly defeated, for every evil spirit attacks it. And after these things I woke up, and blessed the Most High, as well as the angel who intercedes for the nation of Israel, and for all the righteous. Chapter 3 When I was journeying to my father, I found a brass shield. That being so, the name of the mountain is also Aspis, which is near Gabal, to the south of Abila. And I kept these words in my heart. And after this I counseled my father and my brother Reuben to command the sons of Hamor not to be circumcised, for I was zealous because of the abomination which they had brought upon my sister. And I slew Shechem first, and Simeon slew Hamor. And after this my brothers came and destroyed that city with the edge of the sword. And my father heard about these things and was angry, and he was grieved, and that they had received the circumcision, and after that had been put to death. And in his blessings he looked wrongly upon us. For we sinned because we had done this thing against his will, and he was sick that day. But I saw that the sentence of God was for judgment to be enacted upon Shechem, for they aspired to do the same thing to Sarah and Rebekah as they had done to our sister Dinah, but Yahweh prevented them. And they persecuted our grandfather Abraham when he was a stranger, and they annoyed his flocks when they were large with their young, and they handled Ebleon, who was born in his house, with great shame. And they behaved in this manner with all strangers, taking away their wives by force, and then banishing them. But Yahweh's wrath came upon them in its greatest. And I said to my father Jacob, Yahweh will despoil the Canaanites through you, and will give their land to you, and to your seed after you. From this day forward, Shechem will be called a city of imbeciles, for just as a man mocks a fool, so did we mock them. Because they had also worked foolishness in Israel by defiling my sister. And we departed and came to Bethel. And there again I saw a vision just as the former, after we had spent seventy days there. And I saw seven men in white clothing saying to me, Rise up, put on the robe of the priesthood, and the crown of righteousness, and the breastplate of understanding, and the garment of truth, and the plate of faith, and the turban of the head, and the ephod of prophecy. And each of them carried these things in turn to put them on me, and said to me, from this time on, you will become a priest of Yahweh, you and your seed, forever. And the first angel anointed me with holy oil, and gave me the staff of judgment. The second angel washed me with pure water, and fed me with bread and wine, even the most holy things. He also clothed me with a holy and glorious robe. The third angel clothed me with a linen vest, like an ephod. The fourth angel put a purple girdle around me. The fifth angel gave me a rich olive branch. The sixth angel placed a crown on my head. The seventh angel placed a diadem of priesthood upon my head, and filled my hands with incense, that I might serve as a priest to Yahweh God. And they said to me, Levi, your seed will be divided into three offices, for a sign of the glory of the ruler who is to come. And the first portion will be great. Yes, none will be greater than it. The second will be in the priesthood, and the third will be called by a new name, because a king will arise in Judah, and will establish a new priesthood, after the fashion of the nations. And his presence is beloved, as a prophet of the Most High, of the seed of Abraham your great-grandfather. Therefore, every desirable thing in Israel will be for you and for your seed, and you will eat everything that is good to look upon and your seed will distribute the table of Yahweh. And some of them will be high priests, and judges, and scribes, for the holy place will be guarded by their mouths. And when I awoke, I understood that this dream was like the first dream. I also hid this in my heart, and didn't tell it to any man on the earth. And after two days, Judah and I went up with our father Jacob to see our grandfather Isaac. 
and my grandfather blessed me according to all the words of the visions which I had seen, though he would not come with us to Bethel. And when we came to Bethel, my father saw a vision involving me, that I should be their priest to God. And he rose up early in the morning, and paid tithes of all to Yahweh through me. Afterwards, we came to Hebron, to dwell there. And Isaac continuously called for me, in order to put me in remembrance of Yahweh's law, even as the angel of Yahweh showed to me. And he taught me the law of the priesthood, that pertains to sacrifices, whole burnt offerings, first fruits, free will offerings, and peace offerings. And each day he was instructing me. He was occupied on my behalf before Yahweh. And then he said to me, Beware of the spirit of fornication, for this spirit will continue on and will pollute the holy place by way of your seed. For that reason, find a wife for yourself without blemish or pollution, while you are still young, and not from the race of foreign nations, and bathe yourself before entering into the holy place. Wash yourself when you offer sacrifices, and again, wash yourself when you are finished offering the sacrifice. Offer to Yahweh from the twelve types of trees that have leaves, just as Abraham also taught me, and offer sacrifices to Yahweh from every clean beast and bird. Offer the first of your wine and your first fruits as a sacrifice to Yahweh God, and every sacrifice you will salt with salt. Now, my children, for that reason, observe whatever I command you, for I have spoken to you everything that I have heard from my fathers. Pay attention, for I am clear from your ungodliness and transgressions which you will commit in the end of the ages, deceiving Israel and stirring up against it great evils from Yahweh. And together you will deal lawlessly with Israel, so that he will not put up with Jerusalem because of your wickedness. But the veil of the temple will be torn so as not to cover your shame. And you will be scattered as captives among the nations, and will be chastised and cursed while you are there. For the house which Yahweh will choose will be called Jerusalem, as is contained in the book of Enoch the righteous. Hence, when I took a wife, I was twenty-eight years old, and her name was Melka. And she conceived and bore a son, and I called his name Gerson, for we were sojourners in our land. Concerning him, I saw that he would not be first in rank. Kohath was born towards the sunrise when I was thirty-five years old, and I saw a vision that he was standing on high in the midst of all the congregation. Because of this, I called his name Kohath, which means beginning of majesty and instruction. And she bore me a third son, when I was forty years old. And since his mother gave birth to him with difficulty, I called his name Marari, which means my bitterness, because he was likely to die. And Jochebed was born in Egypt, when I was sixty-four years old. For during those days I was renowned among my brothers. And Gershom took a wife, and she bore for him Lomni and Sameh. And the sons of Kohath are Ambram, Issachar, Hebron, and Oziel, and the sons of Merari are Muli and Moses. And when I was ninety-four, Ambram took my daughter Jochebed as his wife, for he and my daughter were born on the same day. I was eight years old when I went into the land of Canaan, eighteen years old when I killed Shechem, and became a priest at nineteen years old. I took my wife when I was twenty-eight years old, and went into Egypt when I was forty-eight. And look, my children, you are the third generation. Joseph died when I was 118 years old. Chapter 4 And now, my children, I instruct you to fear Yahweh your God with all of your heart, and walk in simplicity according to all of his law. You must also teach your children how to read, so that they may have understanding all of their lives, continually reading the law of God. For everyone that knows Yahweh's law will be honored, and will not be a stranger wherever he may go. Yes, he will gain many more friends than even his parents, and many men will desire to serve him and to hear the law from his mouth. Now knowing this, my children, be sure to work righteousness upon the earth, so that you may have it as a treasure in heaven, and sow good things in your souls, so that you might find them in your life. But if you sow evil things, you will reap every trouble and affliction. Receive wisdom from fearing God with all diligence, 
For though you may be led into captivity, and cities and lands may be destroyed, and gold and silver and every possession perishes, nothing can take away the wisdom of the wise, except the blindness of ungodliness and the callousness that comes from sin. For if a man keeps himself from these evil things, then wisdom will be a thing of glory to him, even while among his enemies. And in a foreign country, it will be as a fatherland, and in the midst of his enemies, it will show itself to be his friend. Whoever teaches noble things and does them, they will be enthroned with kings, just as my brother Joseph also was. In all of this, my children, I have learned that at the end of the ages, you will transgress against Yahweh, stretching out your wicked hands against him, and you will be disdained by all the nations. For our father Israel is pure from the transgressions of the chief priests. For as heaven is pure in Yahweh's sight than the earth, so you also should be the lights of Israel, purer than all of the nations. But if you get darkened through your transgressions, what will all the nations do who live in blindness? Yes, you will become a curse upon our race, because the light of the law, which was given as a light for every man, this you desire to destroy by teaching commandments contrary to the ordinances of God. You will rob the offerings of Yahweh and steal choice portions from him, eating them contemptuously with harlots. And you will teach Yahweh's commandments out of covetousness. You will pollute wedded women, and you will defile the virgins of Jerusalem. You will join yourselves with harlots and adulteresses, and you will take the daughters of the nations as your wives, purifying them with an unlawful purification. And your union will be in like manner to Sodom and Gomorrah. And you will be puffed up with pride because of your priesthood, lifting yourselves up against men, and not only against men, but also against the commandments of God. For you will look down on the holy things with jests and laughter. Because of this, the temple which Yahweh will choose will be laid to waste because of your uncleanness, and you will become captives throughout all the nations. You will be an abomination to them, and you will receive reproach and everlasting shame from the righteous judgment of God. And all who hate you will rejoice at your destruction, and if you were not to receive mercy through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our fathers, not one of our seed would be left upon the earth. And now I have learned that for seventy weeks you will go astray, and profane the priesthood, and pollute the sacrifices. And you will make the law void, and nullify the words of the prophets by your evil perverseness. And you will persecute righteous men, and hate the godly, and will abhor the words of the faithful. And a man who will renew the law in the power of the Most High, you will call a deceiver. And at last you will rush upon him so as to slay him, not knowing his dignity, taking innocent blood through wickedness upon your heads. And your holy places will be laid to waste even to the ground because of him. And you will have no place that is clean, but you will be cursed by being dispersed among the nations until he visits you again and will receive you in pity. Chapter 5 And concerning what you have heard about the seventy weeks, hear about the priesthood also. For in each jubilee there will be a priesthood. And in the first jubilee, the first who is anointed to the priesthood will be great and will speak to God as to a father. And his priesthood will be perfect with Yahweh. In the second jubilee, he that is anointed will be conceived in the sorrow of beloved ones. And his priesthood will be honored and will be glorified by all. And the third priest will be taken hold of by sorrow, and the fourth will be in pain, because unrighteousness will gather itself against him exceedingly, and all of Israel will hate their neighbors. The fifth will be taken hold of by darkness, the sixth and the seventh will too. And in the seventh there will be such a pollution as I cannot express before men, for those who do these things will know it. For that reason they will be taken captive and become a prey and their land and their substance will be destroyed. And in the fifth week, they will return to their desolate country and will renew Yahweh's house. And in the seventh week, those who are idolaters, adulterers, lovers of money, proud, lawless, lascivious, and abusers of children and beasts will become priests. And after their punishment will have come from Yahweh, the priesthood will fail. Then Yahweh will raise up a new priest, 
and all the words of Yahweh will be revealed to him, and he will execute a righteous judgment upon the earth for a multitude of days. And his star will arise in heaven as of a king, lighting up the light of knowledge as the sun of day, and he will be magnified in the world. He will shine forth as the sun shines upon the earth, and will remove all darkness from under heaven, and there will be peace in all the earth. The heavens will rejoice in his days, and the earth will be glad, and clouds will be delighted, and the knowledge of Yahweh will be poured out upon the earth, as the water in the seas. And the angels of glory of the presence of Yahweh will be glad in him. The heavens will be opened, and sanctification will come upon him from the temple of glory, with the Father's voice as from Abraham to Isaac. And the glory of the Most High will be uttered over him, and the spirit of sanctification will rest upon him. For he will give the majesty of Yahweh to his sons in truth forever. And no one will succeed him for all generations forever. And in his priesthood, the nations will be multiplied in knowledge upon the earth, and enlightened through the grace of Yahweh. Sin will come to an end in his priesthood, and the lawless will cease to do evil. And he will open the gates of paradise, and will remove the sword that threatens Adam. And he will give the saints the ability to eat from the tree of life, and the spirit of holiness will be upon them. And Belayar will be bound by him, and he will give power to God's children to tread upon the evil spirits. And Yahweh will rejoice in his children, and be well pleased in his beloved ones, forever. Then Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will rejoice, and I will be glad and all the saints will clothe themselves with joy. And now, my children, you have heard it all. Therefore, choose either the light or the darkness for yourselves, either Yahweh's law or Belial's works. And his sons answered him, saying, We will walk before Yahweh according to his law. And their father said to them, Yahweh is a witness, and his angels are witnesses, and you are witnesses and I am a witness, concerning the words that have come from your mouth. And his son said to him, We are witnesses. After this, Levi stopped instructing his sons. And after he had lived for 137 years, he stretched out his feet on the bed, and was gathered to his fathers. And they laid him in a coffin, and afterwards they buried him in Hebron with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob.